Joe Dull. You want a piece of me. You want a piece of me, Joe Dull. Not long ago, at Rogers Toastmasters, an amazing thing happened. Two of the three speeches we had that day shared exactly the same topic. Organ donation. Now, I'm not a believer in coincidence. As I sat in the back of the room, listening to these two speeches reminded me of how I came to be an organ donor and gave birth to today's talk. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, for me, the very thought of being an organ donor for many years was, well, it's, well, it's like the guy you've seen in the movie. You've seen this guy squaring off against someone going, hey, you want a piece of me? <laughs> <laughs> Not happening. <laughs> when it came to being an organ donor, that guy was this guy. My reasons, however, were extraordinarily well founded. <clears throat> sure, I could cite religious concerns or questionable medical practices, but all of those reasons combined could not hold a candle to my most compelling reason. Ignorance. <laughs> I didn't know anything about being an organ donor. And I liked it that way. <laughs> As far as I was concerned, at the end of time, when my body came back, it's my job to make sure it comes back with all of its parts intact. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how in an instant, a lifetime of beliefs, convictions, and even of ignorance can be completely overturned? On a beautiful day in February 1996, I received a call from my sister Pam telling me that our youngest sister Terry had just been taken to the hospital with what they believed was a stroke. Well, I got to the hospital and our entire family was there. My brother Pete was the first one to meet me coming down the hall and gave each other a big hug and then Pete breathed six words to me that changed my life. And just then, Pete had to tighten his grip on me because my legs went. No, this can't be. Terry just turned 38, not two days ago. She's the epitome of beauty and health. She loved life. She loves her two little girls. She loved to dance. You should have seen Terry dance. This can't be. This is a mistake. How could this be? The best the doctors could tell us was that Terry had suffered a brain aneurysm. There was no way to explain why it happened. It just happened. She was on total life support and was pronounced brain dead just shortly after I arrived at the hospital. Terry remained on life support, however, because Terry was an organ donor. Even so, the surgeons could not touch Terry's organs without written consent from her husband, Ralph. Well, <coughs> after what you can imagine was an agonizing consultation with the doctors, with experts in our own family, and even with their 13-year-old daughter, Kim, Ralph gave his consent. Each of us was given a moment to spend with Terry, and then Terry left with the surgeons. Now, that day started out like any other day. That night, our family of ten had lost its first. Over the months that followed, an organization called Life Source shared with us how Terry's gifts had been used. Most memorable was how she had saved one man's life who would have died without the miracle kidney that Terry provided. In his mid-forties, he now spends time with his family because a beautiful young woman of 38 chose to be an organ donor. 
Every year in the United States alone, over 7,000 people die waiting for the chance at life that comes from donors. That's 19 people every single day. Over 90,000 others are waiting right now on the National Transplant Waiting List. Over 90,000, I can imagine. A short time after Terry passed, Ann and I were driving in the car and talking about everything that had happened, and Ann decided this might be a good time to broach this topic with me. Has any of this changed your mind about being a donor? In that instant, I was so clear on how right it was for me to be a donor. I was so clear that I did not have one reason why I should not be a donor, and about 90,000 reasons why I should. So did Terry's passing have meaning? You bet it did. You bet. She gave life a chance for one young father in the Midwest. She freed me from a lifetime of selfish ignorance and as a result will likely save other lives when I pass. She even inspired me to give this speech today so that maybe, just maybe, one person who hears this talk will choose to be a donor. And as for my concerns about having all of my parts in the time, <laughs> God can do this good of a job the first time around, <laughs> <laughs> with one small exception. <laughs> I reckon he could do it again, because you can bet when my time to leave this world comes and the surgeons are preparing to harvest my organs, I'm going to be in that operating room squaring off with them going, hey! You want a piece of me? <laughs> Help yourself, guys. I'm through with it. As a matter of fact, I am next on Terry's dance card. Mr. Toast.